Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now Steve Morris, and he is the director and writer of He Knows, and he also plays Jason in the movie. How you doing, Steven? Doing pretty good. A little worn out from a recent move, as you can see, with all these boxes behind me. So. <laughs> Been there, done that. I uh, I ended up moving. Um, I was living in the build. I'm in an apartment complex, and I was in the building right like next door to the building I'm in now, and I moved to this building and still it caught it was probably easier to get a moving company but it still cost an arm and a leg i'm like why is there so much money i'm like right next door right it's just like, we had small stuff so it was like a, a lot of unpacking packing packing unpacking like, oh God, that, it's so that's cheap. the worst part is the unpacking <laughs> and the packing and all that it's like it never gets done Right, I take everything out of one spot, clean that spot, move that spot, re-clean yep. it, put everything back. I'm like, oh my god, I thought I cleaned this three times, it's still dirty. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, oh, I, I always hate it moving. I, I hate, that's probably one of the worst things, because you have all the stuff you gotta, you know, unpack it all. It's just a pain. Um, so, obviously, you directed and wrote, and you were also in uh, He Knows. Um, but before we get into the movie itself, Give us a little background about yourself and how did, tell us, how did you get your start into filmmaking and acting? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I went to the Art Institute in North Hollywood for digital filmmaking and video production. Nice. Uh, there I got to do a lot of intern work and such, uh, a lot of bigger companies. I was uh, recording mostly private events for like uh, Play Playboy Mansion parties, Hustler events, nice. video releases, stuff like that. It was just like really not my wheelhouse of stuff because I'm type of a little bit more uh clean cut type as you can see with my movie no nudity type uh horror guy but um yeah it was just really different than what i was expecting in hollywood but you know um that's how i got doing that and uh just figured i wanted to act and then i moved back to indiana started dabbling in film out here and really just couldn't find that many acting opportunities and was like oh, i guess i'll have to write something and then it was like who wants to read my writing you know at, when you started out nobody wanted to read your own writing and um so I had to produce it, direct it, and everything else. And um, and that's just kind of how it all came about. It's just I wanted it so bad, man, that I was just like, I'll make it happen. You know, if I'm going to invest in something, invest in myself. You know, and uh, this film is basically myself. Uh, he knows. It was just my first little baby where it was like I, I, I did everything, you know, for the most part. Pre-production, production, post-production, production. Post -production uh, you know, and after, you know, just uh, with yeah. self-distribution and everything, it's just like a never-ending job, and luckily, it's something I, I'm passionate, and I, I find fun, so it, it's, it doesn't feel like work, you know, you're just kind of like, hey, this movie's out, you guys want to watch it? It's cool, I love your movie, too, and it's just a lot of networking, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's just uh, a lot of fun, so, you know, I don't like to say I do one thing, per se, because I'll do anything on set, I'll do PA, I'll show up and do crafty, you know, I'm just a team player. Do whatever it takes to do, uh, get the job done. Indie, indie rights, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, like, the, the indie community, like, it, it's great. And it, re it really is. And uh, when you get your work out there and your name out there, then it just keeps flowing in. And, like, people want to, like, be like, do, you need, do I need some help for this? Or do you need somebody on camera for that? Or behind the scenes for this? And you, you get all these people chiming in and all that. And it really becomes amazing. Um, it is a knit community. And, you know, when you get your name out there, that's when, pe like I said, people start coming in. And, you know, that, I mean, he, and now as he knows, is that your first movie? Uh, first one as basically, I'd say, feature film as writer, director, producer, and everything. I've acted in quite a few uh, okay. indie projects, mostly short films, a few okay. features here and there. Uh, Wicked Ones, directed by Tori Jones. That one just came out from distribution recently, so it, I don't, don't quote me, but I do believe it's on Amazon and possibly Tubi as well, but that's a sequel, so there's a, a part one to that. It's called The Wicked One, if people haven't saw either one of those. Okay. Really great films, really uh hardcore like uh halloween vibes you know uh straight haddonfield vibes I, I really loved the film as a fan for the first one so i got involved on the second one however i could and it, you know for that it was uh through crowdfunding i i just bought that perk you know i was kind of like right. I, I network with people 
I want to also help this filmmaker. What better way to do it than, you know, to contribute and also be part of the project. And since then, right. Tori has invited me on to a couple of projects I've done. Um, there's a little t-shirt. My character wears a t-shirt and he knows. Uh, that t-shirt appears in another film called uh, They See You by Tori Jones. And then I'll also make a little cameo in something else he has coming out called Phantom Fun World. Uh, right. So just a shout out to Tori Jones, another independent filmmaker, a uh, pretty cool guy down in Kentucky. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, applying to background work. I've been in like Jungle Cruise, Hellfest, uh, Nashville, um, a bunch of other random, you know, background work that was just really fun that you get to like bird's eye view, just kind of seeing how stuff works. And um, yeah, and helping other filmmakers, that's just like a PA or just get on set however I could was basically how I put my team together because I'd be on one set and I'd be like, I really dig this person. They got a great vibe. They're a hard worker. Uh, and that's just how we uh, found the cast and crew for the most part. And we had some people that applied that was like, you know, bigger names and stuff. I was just like, oh my God, thank you. Like I was, I was just expecting indie locals and stuff. And then I ended up getting people like, you know, Lynn Lowry from the Shivers and Crazies and, uh, you know, Morgan Pyle from Extremely Wicked, uh, Shockingly Evil and Vile. She played Zac Efron's daughter in that, a Ted Bundy nice. film for Netflix. Uh, Britt Baker is a Fox 59 news anchor here in Indiana. Uh, a lot of heavy hitters, you know, Ju Julie Phillips, Jessa Flux, uh, Sharon Phillips, uh, just so many names. It was just like yeah. really cool people that I lucked up to an in uh, independent community that I ended up getting a hold of just by being on other sets and networking, you know. So. That, that's awesome. Yeah. And that's how it all is. It's all it isn't really about how talented you are, even if you are talented. It's about who do you know? You know, like the networking side of things, you know, who do you know, um, and just meeting, new, in, you know, people that are in the industry. And that's how you find people that are talented that you might want to work with. And then they do a good job on your set. And it's like, OK, well, I want to work with them again, even donating to crowdfunding campaigns like we do, like people that donated to us. Um, we worked with them again without them donating because we really like their skills and their talent. So like just one donation for one movie can lead to, you know, working with them in a lifelong partnership for other movies. Absolutely. I had a couple of people that donated for my film and they just blew me away. I was like, mm -hmm. you cannot tell who paid and, you know, anything got paid for my film. Very few people paid uh, to be in the film, but it was like, you can't tell because they were such great actors. And I just... Yeah had such great connections with those people because they truly believed in the project like I did and they're out there promoting and just doing a great job as you know uh, aspiring filmmakers themselves so it's just like writing them roles in my next projects and such so uh, not ones that they're going to pay for either I want to pay these people uh, just to kind of give back to yeah. them because I believe they've you know not only have they shown that they're hard workers but you know they have talent <laughs> and they're growing as uh, artists and stuff too so it's just inspiring to help uh, keep it in a family, I guess I would say, you know, just kind of yeah. keep it going. Absolutely. And I'm the, well, our Zoom was scheduled for seven and just, we started early. So I'm trying to turn this off quick because the, your, your Zoom meeting is now beginning. Notification is going on. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, wait, wait. wait, we started early. <laughs> um, so we talked a lot about now you and about, you know, other movies and all that stuff that you were in, involved with now about He Knows. Um, for those that are unaware about this movie and don't know what this movie is about, can you tell us a synopsis about what this movie is? Like, what can they expect? Okay. So he knows is essentially, I, I break it down to it's about a mass killer known as Sammy the Elf uh, that punishes the naughty in a small Midwestern town on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. See, mm -hmm. I like that because every Christmas movie we get is Santa Claus killing. Like, mm -hmm. let's switch it up. An elf? That's even better. We, I don't think I've ever seen an elf kill in a horror movie yet. <laughs> Absolutely. And that was uh, my big thing. So when I first wrote the film, you know, it's just kind of like, write whatever I want to try to make it. And it was like a creature feature. So like the whole backstory, you know, for Sammy the Elf, it was like Mr. and Mrs. Claus couldn't have a kid of their own. So the elves made them one. Uh, that was originally going to be like the whole plot of the film. But then I looked at, I was trying to raise 30,000 and I think I raised like 15,000. And I was like, realistically we're gonna have to break this down to something else so i was like what's scarier than a creature feature is you know a whodunit a mass yeah. killer situation where it could be anybody on the screen uh possibly killing the people that you love or hate and in this film i made sure you hated a lot of people <laughs> <laughs> nice nice um so you obviously play the character of jason so um i guess a two-part question uh 
first of all, how did you decide to give yourself this part? And what can you expect from the character of Jason in the movie? Um, You know, uh, for me being doing so many things on a project, I was like, if I'm making a movie, I definitely wanted to act because that was my whole goal in the beginning to be an actor. But I was like, I really don't want to be the main focus or anything. I just want to be a fun, light character that kind of maybe comic relief. Uh, in this case, is he was kind of a fun stoner type character, which <laughs> me being exhausted all the time on set with you see me right now, like I probably look big right now. <laughs> just uh, It just fit perfectly. I was like, he gets some fun lines, you know, some smaller scenes, nice uh, surprises throughout there as well. And yeah. Um, yeah, it just kind of came about naturally. Uh, when I was younger, I was uh, I smoked quite a bit of weed when I was younger, and uh, I had a bong that broke, and people were like, you're still smoking out of that? Dude, you're going to end up killing yourself with that. So one day, <laughs> I was just like, that'd be funny. And I just wrote it into a script, you right. know, uh, uh, who would, you know, possibly fall on something like this, Right. you know? So is it hard to be not just an actor in the movie, but also, like, directing the movie itself? Oh, so hard. I, I I took on a lot for my first feature film, obviously. Uh, it would have been amazing just to be an actor <laughs> in it. Yeah. Uh, but having to focus on everything else, juggling schedules and budgets and rewrites and so forth and so forth, it was just, um, it's a daunting task, you know. Uh, definitely try to make sure you got people that are going to support you if you're going to try to do mm -hmm. what I was doing because it's a lot to do on your own for sure. Yeah. Um, I do it again, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it is very stressful. I think scheduling for me was always the biggest pain in the ass because you're working with everybody that needs to be in these scenes for these days and make sure they're free. And I always had the issue where they were free and they were free and they were free. And then literally like a week before filming, now I'm not free. Now I have to redo the whole schedule. We can't do these scenes this day. And it was a big pain in the ass. The one time the lady that was playing the the main it was like the main character and she was she was she was only available like two days and we needed her for like a main uh, like a lot of stuff so we were filming a like crap ton in that those two days and then like oh like a week or whatever or two weeks or whatever it was beforehand she just dropped completely and it's like now i have to re like cast this role and make sure they're free these days and redo the whole schedule it was a pain so i feel for you on doing every task you could possibly do on your own it's a pain. Yeah. I was having flashbacks as you're saying that whole story. I was like, yeah, so much. Because we we started in October 2020 mm -hmm. and then wrapped uh, filming uh, August 2021. And we only filmed 22 days. But right. all those days getting people together, it was like, who's free yeah. then? Who's free now? And it's like last yeah. minute. Like, I'm not free today, but I'm free tomorrow. And I'm like, right. well, that shipped all the scenes then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or that's you blocking. Yeah what have you yep. and the worst and with our movie it was it was a halloween based movie it was in the fall so we had three months to film we started in the middle of august and we went till the like first week of november and it was like we had to get done those couple of months or we have to wait a whole nother year but we got it done but it wasn't easy yeah i mean dude i was filming christmas scenes in august you know yeah. what i mean uh yeah. Luckily, it doesn't, you, you can't tell too, too much, but I, I'm sure yeah. it might stick out to a few people who are like, you know what, yep. that's Indiana weather right there. No. Yeah. <laughs> All four yep. seasons of the month, uh, it's just how we live, you right? know? And it's not like we have the Hallmark budget where we can film, you know, Christmas movies in, in May and June to get ready for a December, November release. Yeah, it was just like, right in the beginning of COVID too like uh because that started in March of 2020 I want to say and I was like yeah by October we'll be good to go uh we shot like two days and I was like everybody's like I can't travel I can't do this my grandfather has COVID I can't do that or this and I was just like all right let's hold back let everybody get safe you know I don't have money for everybody to be going to the hospital and such and uh taking days off of their work and stuff I feel horrible uh, so we we played it safe, you know what I mean? And just try to schedule it out, you know, separate days, keep as few people on set as possible. Um, yeah, struggles. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you have a plan for a sequel? And uh, if so, what can we expect from it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, mm, so I originally had an outline for a trilogy that would have continued more off of the story that's set up in this film going into a lot more backstory and continuing with a lot of the characters that are setting up. Uh, but that was all depending on the film kind of, you know, 
going boom and blowing up or something uh, right at release. And, you know, it's doing pretty well, but it's not like got the big following and I never really had the budget for it. So like a $30,000 film or is like 14.5, 14.6, somewhere around there. It was definitely under 15,000, but I put the rest in out of pocket, working two jobs, donating plasma, you know, wow. just indie film life, blood, sweat, and tears, you know, right, and, literally, uh, literally. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, yeah. It was just maddening. Um, I'm so exhausted. I forgot where I was going with that. I apologize. No, um, you're fine. You're fine. Um, so for those that do want to watch, he knows where and when, I mean, where and how can people watch this film? Oh, so it's available on Amazon and Tubi, and that also somehow reminded me that we were going in to talk about the sequel. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. Uh, so yeah, it's available on Amazon, Tubi, and as well as morrisbetterpictures.com, uh, but that's more for if people want the Blu-ray and they want to pre-order it, because I'm going to be having that probably late January, early February. I'll be able to start right. making those and shipping the physical out, and um yeah, that's uh, pretty much for where you can see it and hopefully where you can get the physical copies if anybody's interested. I know I'm a physical media guy and I just like to have that stuff in hand. Yeah. And I'm planning on having some fun artwork and such on the Blu-rays. And there's also going to be a couple of deleted scenes because as you're talking about scheduling and everything, you know, I had actors from out of state here. We shot some of their scenes with blocking because certain people couldn't show up. And we lost the location when they moved back out of, they had to go back to their states after filming their scenes. So we couldn't get like reshoots. So yeah. there was right. So I have some deleted scenes that may show some more characters uh, doing more stuff than what you may have seen in a film. Uh, mainly, it's going to be the CC and Eddie scenes that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, some fun deleted scenes. I'm going to have the music video and all that stuff on there. Awesome. Um, but yeah, um, so with the sequel, uh, the the working title for that right now is called They Know. Uh, it's going to take place roughly about five or so years after the first film. And that's kind of the twist with this one is the first film was just a film. And we're all a group of filmmakers that made something that we were kind of hoping to blow up, but it didn't. Now we're all in different stages of our careers. Some of us are SAG actors. Some of us are retiring. Some of us are just doing different things. Mm -hmm. And um now the film is starting to find its audience after five or so years being out and released <laughs> and we're starting to get popular at conventions and there's talks of a sequel but now there's somebody dressed as sammy the elf in real life picking people off from the film and so it's going to be a, a, a big meta film so when i look at like west craven as my big inspiration i was going to say west craven's new nightmare absolutely yeah. and then you know i look at kind of what they're doing with the new scream film it's a lot Kind of uh, what I'm writing into my new film because nice. I'm hoping for a lot of it to take place at a horror convention you know what I mean so we will have people dressed as Sammy the Elf it's just regular costumes so we'll see a lot of different interpretations of Sammy the Elf and not just nice. Christmas versions like you would see Ghostface with like uh, the Scarecrow version and all that other ones you know uh, so that's yeah. kind of where I'm it'd be so go. cool to see some like the actor that played Sammy the Elf at a convention signing an autograph for somebody and then that actor gets killed by another elf or something. That'd be freaking badass. I've got some really fun twists on stuff like that that we're hoping to do. Because, uh, again, it's going to be popularized in the meta culture of this right. little universe that I have. So we're all going to be kind of exaggerated versions of ourselves. Nice. Uh, whoever I have come back. So far, I've talked to quite a few of them, and they're all interested. Uh, nice. So... Yeah, hopefully go a little bit bigger with the sequel since it's going to be at horror conventions, possibly get some bigger names attached and cameos and such from uh, That'd be great. a lot of That'd bigger be people awesome. that seem to be fans of Sammy for some reason. They uh, love yeah. that mask, man. And, um, you know, that was a big thing for us. I wanted something between Elf on the Shelf and Twisty the Clown from American mm -hmm. Horror Story because yeah. I'm a big American Horror Story guy and that smile was really important for me. I wanted something that just like, was haunting your soul you know what i mean it's just piercing no matter what goofy situation is going on you're like fuck that guy <laughs> you know what I mean? nice nice so the last question i do got for you do you have anything else at all that you would like to promote whether it be social media accounts websites other projects anything at all oh yeah sure uh so you can find me at steven anthony morris on facebook uh you can also find he knows the movie on facebook i have another film in the works that's going to be my next project called bad apples um, I compare that one a little bit more to like The Good Son or the film Orphan. It's going to be following the antagonist. It's a young girl named Alice. She's a self-absorbed sociopath that 
uh, starts to show her true colors when her foster family adopts yet another kid to steal her spotlight. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I compare that to The Good Son, it's just like, I really want to go into the character's like uh, psyche. We're breaking down why she's kind of a little bit of a nut job. You know, when I watch right. like, The Good Son, I'm like, why is he killing this dog? Why is, you know, he hurting his sister? All these different <laughs> things. It's like, it would have been nice to get more into that character, you know, Swear alert alerts if you haven't seen that movie that came out in the 80s, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, no, um, aging ourselves. No, uh, you're 30, 32, right? Yeah, 30, I just uh, I just turned 33. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't remember anymore. I think I, could, I had to think of my own age. Yeah, dude, it's like once you hit 30, you're just kind of like, eh. yeah, like yeah. Uh, all the body parts already are pretty much broken at this point. I mean. <laughs> As I start aging, there's nothing new that's going to happen right now until I get to 40. Then my mind starts going in the midlife crisis mode. I swear, it was like, if I don't get six hours of sleep, I'm like brain farting. Like, what was I talking about? Like, oh my God, this is a great podcast, but yeah, here I am, you know? Um, yep. uh, another thing I guess I would plug would be, um, yeah, I guess this the, the idea for the sequel of They Know, if you're another horror filmmaker and you guys have your own horror uh, films out there. If you, if, I prefer somebody that at least has something available on Tubi, yeah. you know, because I mean? Tubi seems to be like my favorite place right now for my film. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you got a horror film and it's out there on Tubi and you're thinking, hey, it'd be cool to have my characters or something like that cameo in a film, you know, maybe get at me. That's something I'm hoping to put together is a fake convention essentially in this film mm -hmm. of horror filmmakers so we can have cameos and stuff you know and when i yeah. talked about paying it forward you know yeah, there's a lot of people i'd like to bring on and you know hopefully plug them and in this film when i do the horror convention what i'm thinking of doing is actually setting it up like a real horror convention guests can pay and come be extras in the film mm -hmm. uh real horror filmmakers can have their actual booths and tables pop promoting their films selling their merchandise for real but also as you know extras you know and i feel like it would just be a fun way for everybody to just kind of get together on something and if you haven't done something like that before it'd be a fun way to kind of learn about it you know what i mean and a big yeah. community where you can meet multiple filmmakers and kind of get their feeling on how you know everything goes down in a a, a set you know it's just yeah absolutely a big networking guy you know what i mean so i want yeah. everybody to know my friends and i want to know your friends you know yeah, um, absolutely it's the way you do so, it in the industry absolutely um yeah other than that i really can't think of what else to plug other than all my friends you know what i mean uh, a lot of people out there doing some really cool things right now I'm, there's yeah. another christmas film it's like uh god it's triple x christmas or something like that but it's yeah. uh a, when you talk about a killer santa there's a killer santa who's killing people on a christmas themed horn set and i was just like wow that seems like an interesting concept you know what i mean yeah uh, that's actually pretty damn cool i feel so bad i can't think of the name of their movie right now but i know it starts with triple x uh <laughs> maybe it is triple x christmas or something like that but i saw okay. that concept and i was like oh my god i'm a big holiday horror guy i think about black christmas halloween all these different films yeah. uh, thanks killing you know what i mean so that one was just like oh that caught my eye and it's like mm -hmm. if you were thinking my movie needed more boobies uh, maybe that one has what you're looking for. You know what I mean? I don't have anything to do with that project, but I, I saw it floating around out there in the indie community right now. And I was like, that seems like one to keep an eye on. And I think they're crowdfunding. So if anybody's want to check it out, find out the name for it. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah. And before I let you go, just to let everybody else know that if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to slash that subscribe button. Also, you can like, comment, and share on social media. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other podcasting platforms I am on, be sure to rate, like, subscribe, also share on social media. Um, I'm also on Cameo, so, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. So make sure to book me to tell your family, happy, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. So uh, make sure to book me on Cameo. Just search me on Cameo as Scotty McCoy. Um, I'm on there. Um, and then, of course, my merchandiser is with Virtual Merchandise merch booth you can get my official slasher scotty merchandise it's hard to see um you can get that i have a bunch of different designs on there this is my signature shirt but you can uh check those out at virtualmerchbooths.com under slasher scotty and of course i have six books that are out one of them uh my, my most recent one out in august is ha is uh, the ultimate halloween movie experience so check that out as well um that one is published by bear manor media and my literary agent uh got that set up for me and everything and uh has a uh, about 16 or so original interviews with halloween cast and crew members and thousands of trivia question throughout as well as a forward by 
the queen herself, Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, Stephen, for uh, joining me this evening. Oh, thanks so much for having me, man. I really appreciate it. You know, just yes. paying it forward for another indie filmmaker, man. I just, I appreciate it yeah. so much. You know? Absolutely. I, I mean, I love helping the indie community and helping everybody involved with it. Uh, I mean, how, how else are you supposed to get your name out there if you're not promoting it? And there's a lot of podcasters out there that like to have on the big names. Why? Because they bring in views. But I like, I don't care if mine really bring in the views. I like getting them out there because if, like say 20 people say watch it on youtube that's 20 more people that may have not have heard of it that came across it so you know i love helping out the community as much as i possibly can absolutely much appreciated yep. not a problem you have a great rest of your night you too buddy thanks so much Thank you. yep bye